so more younger Canadians can achieve the dream of home ownership. It will help make life cost less for Canadians. Already, $10 a day childcare is saving young parents thousands of dollars a year. In fact, Canada and Germany are the only G7 countries with a AAA rating from two of the three leading credit ratings agencies. Moody's also predicts that over the medium term, Canada will see stronger economic growth than some other AAA economies. Every Canadian across our great country needs to ask themselves these same questions because the stakes could not be higher. Given the need to make investments, given the need to do it in a fiscally responsible way, we realized that that needed to be underpinned by a plan for tax fairness. Uh, the broad outlines of the tax change which we put forward in the budget are the ones that we will be following. The entry into force date will be June 25th. We are proposing an increase of the capital gains inclusion rate to two thirds with a threshold of $250,000. Critically, people's principal residences, their homes will remain free of a tax on capital gains. So those broad outlines continue to be uh, what the path that we will be following. Um, why are we pursuing that path? We believe we need an economic plan that delivers fairness for every generation. A plan that makes essential investments in housing. A plan that makes essential investments in affordability. A plan that makes essential investments in economic growth, like investments in AI or in research, in universities, in scientists. And we believe that it is essential to make all of those investments in Canada and Canadians in a fiscally responsible way. We knew we had to table a fiscally responsible budget because it was really important to support the Bank of Canada. And we have seen the fruits of that fiscally responsible approach just a few days ago when the bank was the first G7 country to lower interest rates, something that is so important for Canada and Canadians. These tax changes will allow us to expand our national system of early learning and childcare and get down to $10 a day from coast to coast to coast so that more Canadian families can benefit. First, all Canadians will continue to pay no capital gains tax at all when they sell their principal residence. Any money you make on the sale of your home is yours to keep. Second, the tax changes do not apply to the first $250,000 of capital gains every single year. Now that means that most Canadians will still be able to sell successful investments without paying a higher rate. So basically she's running out of other people's money now and she's trying to do a sales pitch on doing more. Let's keep going about her talking here. Because I know that in Canada, we believe in taking care of each other to improve tax fairness for all Canadians. Tomorrow, we will introduce changes that will result in a small number of well-off Canadians paying a little more in tax when they sell a successful investment. Inflation fell to 2.7% in April, down from 2.9% in March. That's four months in a row that inflation has been within the Bank of Canada's target range. Do you want to live in a country where we make the investments we need? In healthcare, in housing, in old age pensions, but we lack the political will to pay for them. 
and choose instead to pass a ballooning debt onto our children. Do you want to live in a country where those at the very top live lives of luxury, but must do so in gated communities behind ever higher fences using private health care and airplanes? Because the public sphere is so degraded and the wrath of the vast majority of their less privileged compatriots burns so hot. Every Canadian across our great country needs to ask themselves these same questions because the stakes could not be higher. Now, as I walk you through the details of the coming tax reform, I want to start by emphasizing that the changes we're making are focused exclusively on investment profits known as capital gains. When someone sells an investment that has appreciated in value, like a portfolio of stocks or a rental property, they accrue a capital gain. In Canada, these gains are taxed below the rate that we all pay on regular income. Today, in fact, only half of the capital gain is taxed at all. So if someone makes a $2 million profit on a stock sale, they pay tax on only $1 million of that gain. Choose to give the greatest tax advantages to those who are already the most well-off advantage. Or we could ask every Canadian to pay their fair share to keep Canada strong. That will reduce the amount of tax they pay on capital gains and increase the lifetime exemption on the sale of all or part of their business. In the end, and this is key, we estimate that only 0.13% of Canadians with an average annual income of $1.4 million. For example, a couple who owns a rental apartment will pay no additional tax on the first $500,000 in profit from a sale. Third, we're increasing the lifetime capital gains exemption for those who sell their small business or farm. Gains up to $1.25 million will now be entirely tax-free. And fourth, to encourage innovation and job creation, we're introducing a new incentive for entrepreneurs. Tomorrow, we will introduce changes that will result in a small number of well-off Canadians paying a little more in tax when they sell a successful investment. In turn, that revenue will pay for investments that will help all Canadians, especially our younger generations. It will help fund our plan to build more homes faster so more younger Canadians can achieve the dream of home ownership. Taxing capital gains is not an inherently partisan idea. And Prime Minister Brian Mulroney raised the capital gains inclusion rate to 75%, higher than the rate we're establishing today. Yet, I have heard from some Canadians who are concerned. No one likes paying more tax, even those who can afford it the most. In the Royal Commission's report, Carter said that fairness should be the foremost objective of the tax system, and he memorably insisted, a buck is a buck is a buck. And Prime Minister Brian Mulroney raised the capital gains inclusion rate to 75%, higher than the rate we're establishing today.